Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. Wait. Something's missing. I don't look white enough. Sometimes you just have to make a fashion statement, and that's what I do for every single video. Ignoring the fact that I wore the exact same white shirt on stream every day for a month. That doesn't matter, and if you want to check out my stream, you can find the link down below. I'm usually playing Football Manager, which is what this video is about. More specifically, the bigger clubs. Now, I made a video like this for lower league management already, and I promised myself right after I made that video that I was going to make this video next. This is something that obviously did not happen. But now that I am in the fine confines of a hotel room, I have all the time in the world to talk about the things that you need to do when managing a big club to maximize your chances at success. At a big club, there's more things to manage and more things that can go wrong and derail what you're trying to accomplish. That and the fact that everybody manages big clubs and not everybody manages small clubs. So this video is probably the one I should have made first anyways. But the way that I'm going to structure this video, ooh, structure, is a walkthrough with what I did starting my new Twitch save, which is with Dortmund. Now there's some extenuating circumstances in the Twitch save that make it a little harder to succeed now. Like they don't have any money, so I can't buy anyone. And they only have one striker. Who has one striker on the whole team? One. Whole team. Except for a 16 year old in the youth team. He's also a natural striker. I know the one striker is Holland, but the man can't play like 75 matches in one season, okay? And I don't want Mario Goetze running around up there. I'm sorry, Benny. And honestly, it's it's time for an honesty corner. Erling Holland is not as good in the game as he is in real life. I'm sorry. Before I get distracted and go on another tangent again, I'm gonna find it. Just give me a sec. time to dive into the actual things that we're going to be talking about today and if you do enjoy the video please do like and subscribe uh, and then hit that little bell you get the notifications every time I post a new video so you can get all the information beamed to your eyeballs or to your brain through your eyeballs or something like that as soon as possible the first thing we are going to talk about is the checklist of things that you need to do the moment you take over a large club now I would highly recommend going to finances as the first order of business. You would like to figure out what is the size of your transfer budget, what is the size of your payroll budget, and what is the size of your overall balance. This is going to tell you, as a large club, how much money there is actually in the club. If you're a big team, you want this to be significantly stable. You want a lot of financial stability because you have to spend a lot of money on things like players and staff and stuff. So my other save, I have Bate Borisov and our balance, our entire balance is 10 and a half million. Dortmund spends that in less than one month. Obviously, if you're making a big transfer, this is gonna be a lot higher, but just expenses, paying people, 10 and a half million US dollars. So when you come into a big club the first time, you need to take stock of what you have financially, and it's gonna structure basically everything else that you are able to do. So I am aware of the fact that my club is financially healthy, but my transfer budget and payroll budget that are available are not significant enough for me to make any moves at all. I am currently spending two million more than I should be on my payroll budget. My transfer budget is, for all intents and purposes, completely negligible. But with a balance like this, if I had the ability to convince my board to increase the transfer budget and the payroll budget, I, I would be able to. I just don't have that kind of pull right now because I just started. It tells you if you're rich. <laughs> I wish I had something like that in real life hovering over your head like, I am not rich. Definitely not. The next important thing you're going to want to handle when you get in control of a large club is your staff. And when you're in lower league management, when I made the other type of video like this, your staff 
doesn't have as much to do. But when you're at a huge club, you have a ton of things that need doing. You've got like three or four teams. You've got 75 players. You've got all the all stuff that needs to be done. You can't do it all or you won't have a life. And I don't. So don't be like me. And when you're this big club, you got all these things that need doing, you obviously want to have the best possible people to be doing those things. Now, I made a very in-depth video about how to set up your staff, how everything should be orchestrated. So I'm not gonna bore you with that here. What I can do is link the video I'm talking about up in the corner there, and you can dive into that at your own whim. Whim? But there's one thing I want to talk to you about. It has to do with the balance, which we'll keep referring back to doing this big club video. That once you've gone through and decided all the people that you want to release, you have to do a cost-benefit analysis. Because I will hammer it into your head how important staff is. But I'm a bit of a hypocrite. You guys were too distracting on stream. I forgot to get ahead of sports science, so... That's what we're going to do as this example. But once you go through and you figure out, oh, I definitely want to get rid of this guy, I might want to get rid of this other guy, then you have to decide whether it's worth the amount of money. Because while staff is important, players are more important. So if I wanted to get a new assistant coach, which is something that I actually did, I'd go into Marco Landucci and you go up to contract in mutual termination. If you are just taking over at a new club, they will always accept mutual terminations, but sometimes that can be a significant amount of money. So the cost benefit analysis that you have to do is, how much value does this person cost me to get rid of compared to how much value would I gain by adding this other person that I want and that is better, but how much better are they and is it worth that amount of money because there is no better way to torpedo your balance for no reason at all than terminating every single person on your staff just so you can replace them with someone who is essentially just as good or slightly better i'm all for zealotry and staff that's not how you do it now i said we were gonna we we're sign that head of sports science and that's what we're doing so i'm gonna jack this up whoop, whoop. oh we got one tony what's up he's a fitness coach at Sheffield Wednesday. I heard they were even better than Sheffield Thursday. No, 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 wait, wait, I got another one. What did Wednesday say to all the other days to win a football match? Sheffield. Okay, that was terrible. I want to sign this guy. I go up to contract. I go to approach to sign. He wants to be the head of sports science. He wants this certain amount of money. And, oh, Zealand, can you move your head, please? Fine, fine, I'll move my head. He wants a compensation of 350 thousand dollars now when i was at bate borisov my board would have sold a player for three hundred fifty thousand dollars right under my nose right when i got there and i wouldn't have been able to stop them about it it's a lot of money now when you're dortmund it's a lot less money than it is to my bate borisov team but it's still a lot of money and with the number of staff spots that you have i mean i have what 40 members of my first team staff if i spent three hundred fifty thousand dollars signing literally every one of them i what's the math I figured it out. It's $14 million, which is 14 times my current transfer budget. It's a whole lot of money that I really should not be spending. So when you come back to the big club cost benefit analysis, you now have a coach on your team and then this other coach that you like. And the coach on your team is going to cost you money to get rid of. But now the other coach, if they're already on another team, is also going to cost you money. So if you add that together, you're talking like $700,000 just to fill one staff position. You need to be careful in these situations. There's a tempting urge when you have $112 million in the bank to just assume you can keep spending money. That's just not the case. That being said, I'm totally signing this guy. He's awesome. But he's a head of a department. I can justify that a little more, especially because it's the only staff spot that I'm filling. Before we go any further, I'm sorry. I just, I still, I don't feel white enough. So we got to, here, let's see. We got to do, we got to do another one. I, I don't really know what this one's going to do because I don't want to be wearing any more clothes. Now that I'm a couple of pounds lighter, the next thing that's on my checklist is to go into the staff responsibility section and skip this actually terrible UI and go down to the specific sections. And since 
like I was saying, there are so many things you need to do and have taken care of at a large club like this. You want to go through and make sure you have everything set to your liking once your full staff is signed. After that, you want to go to scouting and assignments, and this is the other kind of portion of things that you need to set up once your staff is in place, not just the responsibilities and who's handling the training. It's right here, by the way, uh, training coaches, edit coach assignments, and then you can see a distribution of the training and the workload that those people are having to put in. Back in the scouting, you're going to want to set up your assignments, and you have usually a ton of scouts if you're at a normal large club. If you don't want to handle this, you can obviously delegate it in staffing responsibilities, but it is absolutely one of the things that you want to go handle. And when you're a large club that has the money to acquire prime level players to make your team better, then you will want to be looking for things that aren't hot prospects. I have a problem, and that problem is a pathological addiction to only scouting for hot prospects. I would strongly recommend that you don't do that. So when you go to create an assignment, you have the opportunity to like, you pick your scout and you can pick your regions. But that's not what we're here for. You'd also wanna be scouting for first team player. When you're a smaller club, I don't recommend really doing this at all, but I think it is obviously something that's really important and good to do at a club that is this size. I debated about putting that in the video at all or not, but to be perfectly honest, I feel like somebody needed to hear that. Scouting seems to be a mysterious land for a lot of people. Then the last thing you do in my checklist of starting with a big club in the immediate future is you go to your squad and you go to your filters. You go to squad, filters, and you can bring up your entire club. You just click all squads, they come up here, and I want you to just, you know, go to reports. Once you got a guy in staff responsibilities that's pretty good at telling you how good a player is, and you go to potential and you sort because you do not want to accidentally forget that you have a talented player somewhere in your youth team or reserve team. And it's easy to forget because you have like 75 of them. Honestly, the large size of these squads can cause serious problems. So you want to make sure that you're locked in to who's coming up in the future, which for me is actually very few people. So that's good. What if I didn't do this and I started sorting out players on loans and trials to try and clean this sort of thing up? I would miss the best prospect at the entire club at Dortmund, it's Sergio Gomez. It's just a good way to make yourself aware of the talent at the club. Now moving on to the big picture stuff. So the second category. Ready? This is gonna be big. Nothing changed, we're still here. Now it's time to talk about the big picture advice, the big picture side of what you need to think about going into managing a large team. One is that you are going to have a ton of matches, much more than a lower league team, except in England, because they play like a match every two days for no reason. This means that I always recommend with a large team prioritizing depth. It's the exact opposite of what Dortmund has when I took over because they only have one true striker. Whatever registration allows, you have the money, build out your depth. People are playing all the time, people are going to get hurt. You need essentially two people you feel comfortable starting at every given position. That's my general rule of thumb, and for strikers, I like to have at least three that I feel comfortable with as my line leader. You know, like elementary school, where you got to be the line leader, the second piece of advice that I want to give you about playing out into the future and how to game plan long term is do not stockpile. That is a fine line here, and I almost always cross it in the wrong way. This is advice for myself too. Just because you can sign every potential player that might be able to turn into a first team player for you for 500,000 here and 500,000 there and 2 million there and 1 million there, and all of a sudden you end up with 45 young players, what the hell are you gonna do with 45 young players? I'm not talking about the garbage that makes up your reserve team. I'm talking about 45 guys that you signed and you're loaning out and there's no, that development's not helped there. Just because you can does not mean you should sign every young guy you like. And I'm gonna roll that phrase right into the next piece of long-term advice that I have. I am always adverse to spending a ton of money. I've become more comfortable with it recently, but if you're going to go out and spend a ton of money, 
make sure that you're actually going to get what you're paying for. There's this thing that happens when you get to the top of the footballing world where somebody's form or what clubs they've played for in the past and their international experience just because of some positional deficit at a big national team bumps their value way up. I mean, really, if you have the exact same player playing for Manchester United and the other ones playing for Bate, the exact same player, but there's two different guys, the guy on Bate, you will be able to buy for like 1 million at the start of the game. If the exact same guy, and I'm talking about rotational level world class, the exact same guy on Manchester United is gonna run you $50 million. So if you're going to spend that 50 million, make sure it's worth it. And just so we're clear, in that case, it's not. Playing FM at a big club is like investing in the stock market. You have to be patient and you have to take your opportunities with the pile of cash that you have. We've all failed at this, but our best saves are when we've timed our purchases right and we bought the right person. And we didn't buy 45 of them because I don't need 45 Brazilians who might be able to be a first team player for me. I'd rather just spend that money on the five that I know will be a first team player for me. And lastly, probably most importantly, when you are managing a big club, the expectations are going to typically be very, very high. What this means in terms of managing morale is that if you lose one match, your morale is actually going to go down significantly and the board's going to go, hmm. Anytime the board makes that noise, it's, it's bad. So don't be afraid to go to your dynamics and use this team meeting section. Apparently, some people don't know that that exists. Go to your dynamics, and if you're starting to lose a few matches, go to team meeting, and you can say, hey, I know we haven't been at our best recently, but pick your heads up. We're going to turn this around. It's exactly what I did with this Dortmund team on stream. You can also use the team meeting to encourage your team. When you're a huge club, typically you're just going to do well all the time, or you're just going to be used to winning. So that type of meeting's not as important. But losing two matches in a row, while if you're at any other club in the world, is not really going to be a problem, it's going to be considered a significant problem. React accordingly, interact with the players often, and try and make sure you can nip that sort of morale thing in the bud. Because when you are playing against the best teams in the world, which is what you're hoping to be doing and will be doing while managing a big club, the smallest thing can make a huge difference. Because the people you're playing against, even if they might not be as good as you, if your team's not quite feeling it in the morale department, you're going to get exposed. And I'm talking outside of the fact that every once in a blue moon, when you're managing in one of the biggest leagues in the world, you're just gonna lose four to nothing for absolutely no reason because the other team just decided to hit all of its long shots that day. Or in the latest match engine, they scored like eight corners and you couldn't do anything about it. And that brings home the last major point that I'd written down that I wanted to talk to you all about taking over a large club. One extra small thing, going back to the transfers we were talking about earlier, is that if you are attempting to sign somebody and the club doesn't necessarily want to let them go, if you are a big club, you have something magical. Pulling power. So you just go to that player and you go, declare interest, why us for transfer as top target. That lets that player know that you're interested and since you are a big club, they will fall over themselves attempting to get signed by you. Depends on how much ambition they have in their personality, but usually they'll come. Declare interest and they will come. So just enjoy having that superpower if you end up in that situation. Thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you on stream, on another video, on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever in God's green earth you want to find me. It's not like my grandparents. I'm God's green earth. Just go get me some more applesauce or something. But really, wherever you want to hang out, I'm there. Join my Discord and we can talk in there too. Have a fabulous day and begin your journey at a large club.